How's it going guys? Uh, happy Christmas or happy holidays to you all. Yes, that is far too early to be saying at the start of November. However, the reason that I'm saying that now is because I actually have the brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! 2018 advent calendar, which is massive. Somebody recently told me about this on one of my live streams and I thought I had to get it for myself. I went in with the intention of getting loads of chocolates, but they're not chocolates. It's full of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, super and ultra rare cards specifically, wintery themed and there aren't that many like holiday Yu-Gi-Oh cards around so I'm curious to see what cards are going to have inside of this. If you want to get this and don't want to be spoiled or you want to get it for somebody as a present or something like that then turn this video off now because I'm going to be spoiling the contents of this and half the fun of this is just doing the day by day unboxings to see what you get through the month of December so turn the video off now if you don't want it but otherwise let's do an unboxing of this awesome calendar. Here is the calendar. We've just taken this lovely Konami film off. So the first thing to point out, just the box itself, we have a Ghost Trick Jack Frost on the front, which is ironic because it is both a Halloween and a Christmas card at the same time, but very fitting for the occasion as well. If we turn it over, we have a Ghost Trick Yeti here. And at the bottom it says that this Yu-Gi-Oh! Advent calendar contains 17 super rare cards and seven ultra rare cards. So we know what we're getting inside of these boxes. And my favorite thing about it is, which is something I wish that all advent calendars would do, the numbers on them are in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. That is fantastic. So without further ado, let's jump into number one, shall we? So as you can see, when you open them up, you slide the tab down like that and the card is revealed. And when you want to pull them out, you just lift the card up and slide it straight out. And the first one, on the first day of Christmas, my true love brought to me a ceremonial bell in super rare. So this is the first one that we've had. It's a very old card, but it is fitting with the old like wintry bells kind of thing. It's a level three light spellcaster monster with zero attack and 1,850 defense, whose effect is both players must keep their hands revealed. It's also got the new kind of rarity where the light attribute up there is shiny as well. It's a nice little start there. Let's just place that down. Right, so number two, what will we get? Here we go, we have a box of friends. Ah, oh, that's nice. Box of friends, a level one light machine type monster. Zero attack, zero defense, its effect is. If this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon from your deck two normal monsters with different names whose attack and defense is zero. Summon them in face up defense position, but they cannot be used as synchro materials. Also, they are destroyed during your next end phase. You can only use the effect of box of friends once per turn. So this card fits quite nicely with the Christmassy card kind of theme with the present and everything so that's very very nice pretty cool on the third day of christmas it seems that my true love brought to me the cover card for the advent calendar a ghost trick jack frost a level one dark fiend type monster with 800 attack and 100 defense his effect is he cannot be normal summoned unless you control a ghost trick monster once per turn you can change this card to face down defense position when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack you can change that opponent's monster to face down defense position and if you do special summon this card from your hand in face down defense position so this one's very nice especially if you're missing some ghost trick monsters pretty sweet on the fourth day of christmas my true love brought to me Another ghost trick, but this time a yeti. <laughs> uh, yes, ghost trick yeti. A level 3 dark zombie type monster. 300 attack, 2000 defense. His effect is he cannot be normal summoned unless you control a ghost trick monster. Once per turn, you can change this card to face down defense position. When this card is flipped face up, you can target one ghost trick monster on the field. This turn, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. So I think they're the only two ghost trick monsters we're going to probably get into this because they're the most Christmassy themed. It's a shame about the ghost tricks nowadays with the inclusion of Link monsters. Monsters. They've actually taken quite a bit of a hit because they're no longer able to put all monsters in your opponent's field face down due to link monsters because they can't. But uh, anyway, on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love brought to me, what card will it be? This time, we have an ice themed card. Ice Queen it is. A level 8 water spellcaster monster with 2,900 attack and 2,100 defense. Her effect is, cannot be special summoned from the graveyard. When this face-up card you control is destroyed and sent to your graveyard, you can target one spell in your graveyard. Add that target to your hand. You must have three or more spellcaster monsters in your graveyard to activate and to resolve this effect. She fits with the icy wintry theme of December, the cold. I was expecting to see some ice barriers, if I'm honest with you, and I've 
still think we probably could see some. <laughs> uh, but the next up we have is the sixth day. And on the sixth day we have a card that I actually haven't seen before. To Latin, which I think I'm saying his name right, which is a light fairy type monster with 2,800 attack and 2,500 defense. His effect is, if it is your opponent's battle phase, a monster you controlled at the start of this battle phase was just destroyed, and all monsters you controlled at the start of the battle phase, minimum two, have now been destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. If summoned this way, choose an attribute, and if you do, destroy all face-up monsters with that attribute. Your opponent cannot normal or special summon monsters with that attribute. A little bit confusing with that card's effect, I actually had to read it twice, but it seems pretty cool. Um, don't know how much play it would have due to the fact that you have to get two monsters destroyed in your side of the field or something. Um, pretty cool though. Seventh day, we have a Fire Fiend level 4 monster with 1,700 attack and 200 defense. His effect is Quick Effect. You can discard this card, inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent, and if you do, skip your next draw phase. You can only use the effect of Firecracker once per turn. Each time your opponent takes effect damage, place one counter on this card. Once per turn, during the end phase, remove all counters from this card that were placed by its effect, and if you do, inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each. Firecrackers, a bit more bonfire nighty, but yeah, all right then. Day eight, we have a one of my favorite cards actually, uh, a snowman eater with his little snowman fez, pretty damn cool. He's a water aqua level three type monster with zero attack and 1900 defense. He's a flip monster and his effect is, if this card is flipped face up, target one face up monster on the field, destroy that target. I used to really like this card quite a lot. Um, I think it's still pretty good now, pretty awesome. And a snowman is perfect for an advent calendar as well. Number nine, what are we gonna get? A wind up Rabbit. Okay. I'm assuming that the wind-ups are in here because they kind of resemble toys, I guess. But a wind-up rabbit, eh, it's quite cool. He's a level 3 Earth Beast Warrior type monster with 1400 attack and 600 defense. His effect is... Quick effect. You can target one wind-up monster you control. Banish it until your next standby phase. This effect can be used only once while this card is face up on the field. I am liking all these reprints with the easier to understand effects using like quick effect and things like that. So that's kind of cool. Number 10. What will we get? Oh, okay. Uh, n don't know this card. Mystical Fairy Elfuria? Am I saying that right? Elfuria. She's a level 3 wind spellcaster type monster with 1500 attack and 900 defense. Her effect is... Once per turn you can reveal one wind monster in your hand until the end of your opponent's next turn. Neither player can exceed summon using monsters with a different level from the revealed monster as exceeds materials. So a good way to shut down exceeds monster plays there, so pretty sweet. Number 11! Ooh, our first Xyz monster, or our first extra deck monster that we've got. Number 82, Heartland Draco. He's a rank 4 Earth Dragon type monster. His effect is... He requires two level 4 monsters to be summoned. While you control a face-up spell, your opponent cannot target this card for attacks. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card. This turn, this card can attack your opponent directly, but other monsters cannot attack. Good way of doing 2000 damage there. By the way, I've just noticed the uh, identification number on these is AC18 for Advent Calendar 18. I just thought that was quite cool. Number 12, halfway through we are. Yes, this is what I was waiting for. This one should have been the one that went in last, but we've got Santa Claus with Claus Spelter's Claws. This is the one that I think we had to have in this. This is the perfect card for it as well. Santa Claus is a level six, ironically a light fiend type monster, as you can see by its duality. 1200 attack and 2500 defense and an awesome ability. You can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's field in defense position by attributing one monster they control. If summoned this way, once during the end phase of this turn, you can draw one card. Did you notice the little Easter egg in this card? Well, it's got 2500 defense and 1200 attack. It starts with 25 and 12. 25 of 12 is Christmas Day. Really nice inclusion with this one. I've always wanted my own Santa Claus. Pretty cool. Day 13. What did we get? On the 13th day of Christmas, we got a Sacred Phoenix of Nephis, which... Um, okay. Not really Christmassy, I guess, but a pretty cool card. Used quite a lot by 
He's quite a lot in Duel Links as well. He's a level 8 fire winged beast type monster. He has 2400 attack and 1600 defense. His effect is once per turn during your next standby phase, after this card was destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, special summon this card from your graveyard. If you do, destroy all spells and traps on the field. Nice little inclusion, especially if you're building one of these decks. Day 14 on the calendar. And <laughs> what is his name? Sorry? Cockadoodle do. <laughs> Haven't actually seen this card before. Uh, he's a level five wind winged beast monster. This card has actually took a little bit of damage in the box. It seems he's been uh, dented a bit. He's got 1,600 attack and 2,000 defense. What is his ability though? Oh, he's a tuner as well. If there are no monsters on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand as a level three monster. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no cards, you can special summon this card from your hand as a level four monster. If this face up card would leave the field, banish it instead. So that's actually kind of cool as a tuner material there because it's able to change the level of its value and it can be special summoned to the field so that's pretty cool. Cockle doodle do indeed. <laughs> Number 15 here. Let's see what we got. Token Fest Evil. A little bit of a, a mixed result there. You've got the holidays and then you've got some horror going on at the same time. So it's a trap card whose ability is when a token is special summoned, destroy as many tokens on the field as possible. And if you do, inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each token destroyed. A nice little card, fits with a the theme and it's in super rare, so pretty sweet. Next, number 16 we have a gift exchange. Uh, this is actually very fitting and we're sticking with the token themes from the last card as well. It's a spell card and its ability is both players banish one card from their decks face down and if they do during the end phase of this turn, both players add to their hands the card their opponent banished by this effect. I've always liked the artwork of this one, like all the kids have got stuff they wanted to, but this little goblin here, he's got a uh, Scrap Kong t-shirt and he's just not very happy with that. <laughs> Number 17 on the calendar, we have a Lone Fire Blossom. Getting back to the effect monsters, this time we have a level 3 Fire Plant type monster with 500 attack and 1400 defense. His effect is, once per turn you contribute one face up plant monster, special summon one plant monster from your deck. Now I don't know if this sees much play nowadays, um, but it could be used I guess with the link summoning mechanic as well, so oh, that's pretty cool, that's a nice little card to have. The kind of firework kind of look in the cards as well, it gives me more of a vampire night kind of thing rather than a christmas one but uh moving on to 18 <laughs> 18 oh my god i can't believe they've given us this um i forget how you pronounce his name now hoshingen hoshin shinegen hoshingen I, I can't say it they've actually made a reprint of this guy in a link monster form where it's actually pretty damn good However, uh, this guy is a little bit outdated nowadays. He is a light fairy monster with 500 attack and 700 defense. His effect is all light monsters on the field gain 500 attack. Also, all dark monsters on the field lose 400 attack. So it would have actually been really nice if they threw in the uh, the new Link monster version of this. That would actually been really cool. It's actually kind of weird that there hasn't been any Link monsters in this now. You feel like they'd want to push it, especially in 2018. That You never know, there might be more stuff later, but... We've had one XCs. We're on to 19 now. 19 is my favourite number because it's my birthday. So will we get something really cool for this one? The answer is I can't read its name already. What the hell is this? Valeri Fawn, Mystical Beast of the Forest. <laughs> I've never actually seen this card before. This is a Earth Beast Tuna Monster. 400 attack and 900 defense. Its effect is you can discard one card then target one level 2 or lower beast monster in your graveyard except Valeri Fawn, Mystical Beast of the Forest. Special summon in attack position or face down defense position. You can only use the effect of Valeri Fawn, Mystical Beast of the Forest once per turn. Interesting. So, ah, okay. Uh, not something that I need, but uh, I guess now we have it. Damn you 19, you let me down. Next up, we are at number 20. We are getting very close to the end here. At number 20, we have a Toy Magician. Toy Magician, a level 4 light spellcaster monster with 1600 attack and 1500 defense. His effect is you can set this card from your hand to your spell and trap card zone as a spell during the end phase. If this set card in your spell and trap zone was destroyed by opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard this turn, special summon this card. If this card is flip summoned, destroy spells and traps on the field equal to the number of Toy Magicians on the field. Not the most practical of cards in the actual card game, uh, has a a lot of potential to uh you know not work but still pretty cool toy magician number 21 what we get in this guy another 
Xyz monster. This time we have, we have Boguska, the terribly tired Tapir. This is pretty damn cool because this is actually quite a, a good card. This actual card actually sees quite a bit of play. I don't know how much nowadays, but it used to. He's a rank four earth fiend type monster whose effect is once per turn during your standby phase, detach one material from this card. If you cannot destroy it, this attack position card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Your opponent cannot target this attack position card with card effects while this card is face up in defense position change all monsters on the field to defense position also negate the activated effects of monsters that were in defense position when that effect was activated a pretty damn good stalling card with 2100 attack and 2000 defense i like this card a lot uh, that's pretty awesome that's actually a really cool thing to get uh, in this calendar next up at number 22 curious to see what we're gonna get here Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty cool. We have a Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Now, it's not the best of the hand trap cards, but this one is still pretty awesome to have, and it's one of my favorite looking ones. She's a dark level three zombie tuna type monster with the effect, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, quick effect, you can discard this card. Reveal one card in your extra deck, then look at your opponent's extra deck. Also, banish all cards in their extra deck with the same name as the revealed card. You can only use the effect of Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries once per turn. How nice would it have been if they included like a ghost ogre or one of the other ones? Uh, I'm just saying that would have been quite nice. But that's a cool card to get. And number 23 here we have... Oh my god. The card that is played most often on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, a Hey Trunade, not to be confused with normal Trunade. Its effect is return all set spell and trap cards on the field to the hand. A nice little card to be fair, that can fit into anybody's deck uh, playing casual, so that's, that's kind of cool. Cool little card to have in there. Not very Christmassy though. And finally, the final day, the 24th day, the day before Christmas, we have the final one, and the final one is... O oh, Token Balm, the trap card, as, you know, it looks the most uh, festive in its uh, artwork there, I guess. Not the best card in the world, I might add, though. Tribute two or more tokens with the same level, then target monsters in your graveyard with the same level, up to the number of tokens tributed. Special summon them, but their effects are negated. Also, destroy them during the end phase. And with that, that is everything. Let's look at the cards we got, shall we? So in the reverse order that we got them, we're going to O oh, Token Balm, a Hey Trunade, a Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, a number 41 Baguska, a Toy Magician, a Valeri Fawn, a Hoshinigen, a Lone Fire Blossom, a Gift Exchange, a Token Festival, Cockadoodle Doo, a Sacred Phoenix of Nephis, a Santa Claus, my highlight of this, a number 82 Heartland Draco, a Mystical Fairy Elphoria, a Wind Up Rabbit, a Snowman Eater, another one I like. A Firecracker, a Towel Latin, an Ice Queen, a Ghost Trick Yeti, a Ghost Trick Jack Frost, a Box of Friends, and finally a Ceremonial Bell. And with that, guys, that is the Yu-Gi-Oh! calendar unboxing done. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Do you plan on getting it? Hope you like my uh, my Christmas top. I only own two. I've got this one and a jumper. <laughs> but I thought I'd go with a messy Christmas one, you know. Hope you enjoyed anyway. Catch you later.